Good day, I'm Lorraine Mendez and this is your JIS News for Tuesday, January 2. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says there will be an increase in the number of zones of special operations this year. Mr. Holness says the government is resolved in its effort to reclaim communities captured by criminals and make Jamaica safe for all citizens. Zones of special operations have shown Jamaicans that our security forces can police communities and control crime in localities without abusing citizens' rights. We have now created a framework for the whole of government response to citizen security. Mr. Holness was addressing the nation in his New Year's message. He also asserted that legislation would be tabled and passed this year to strengthen the police force. Among them are the Police Service Act to facilitate institutional reform in the Jamaica Constabulary Force, the Major Organized Crime and Anti-Corruption Act, and the National Security Act that will coordinate all agencies within the national security space. In relation to the importation of illegal guns and ammunition, the Prime Minister said this would be given priority attention. Illegal weapons and the organized criminal network around their procurement, importation and distribution are national emergencies and will get national attention in 2018, which will include amendments to the Firearms Act, amendments to the anti-gang legislation, and amendments to the Bail Act. Meanwhile, there's a united call from the nation's leaders for Jamaicans to truly embrace its core values and traditions, that of love and care for each other. In his New Year's message, Governor General Sir Patrick Allen encouraged persons to mentor the young, offer support to persons experiencing difficulties, and affirm those forging ahead through challenges. When we fulfill these obligations, we state very clearly the type of society we are and are creating for future generations. For his part, Prime Minister Andrew Holness called for a reduction in violence and aggression against women and children and in how we solve disputes. This year, I intend to lead a national campaign against violence in all its forms. In 2018, let's bring back the Irish Jamaica, the peaceful Jamaica, the loving Jamaica, the happy Jamaica, the prosperous and progressive Jamaica. And leader of the opposition, Dr. Peter Phillips, called for a united approach to peace and crime fighting. As opposition leader, I pledge vigilance, moral courage, and a willingness to have dialogue and collaborate on initiatives that serve the national interest. The Creative Production and Training Center, CPTC, has handed over copies of the 2016 staging of the Calabash International Literacy Festival to the National Library. 19 30-minute episodes were donated on Friday in a bid to preserve our culture. The three-day biannual Calabash Festival showcases the work of local and international authors and poets. Acting Chief Executive Officer of the CPTC, Lorna Napier, says it's hoped that the legal deposit will expose the work of local writers and assist students doing literature exams. Calabash is one of those events at which we find lots of people writing and where we get a whole lot of the Jamaicans who we don't see on a day-to-day -day basis, those who are overseas, to come and expose their work to us. And it is a tremendous opportunity to be able to have this for the wider society to have access to, especially for the students at the CXC level. The next staging of Calabash will be held from June 1 to 3 this year at Treasure Beach in St. Elizabeth. Minister of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sport Olivia Grange says her ministry will continue to support the annual fireworks on the waterfront event, which not only entertains a wide cross-section of people, but also endorses Kingston as the entertainment city. She says her ministry will this year be putting measures in place to put the culture and creative industry, as well as sport, at the center of Brand Jamaica. We're going to get our entertainment zones up and running. We're going to monetize our culture, our craft, and, and all the heritage that we have. Our heritage sites are going to be promoted. Um, we're going to be unveiling our, our um, cultural policy, our revised cultural policy. And the culture and creative industry will now be structured under an entity that will operate out of my ministry. And finally, the Urban Development Corporation, UDC, is thanking its sponsors for a successful staging of fireworks on the waterfront. The event, which rang in the new year, cost approximately $35 million, of which over 80% was covered by public and private sector sponsorships. We have, with pride, gotten the cooperation of our sponsors and all of them who come on board, 
usually follow on to stay with us. The UDC's general manager was among the over 300,000 patrons at Sunday's fireworks event. He says the event is part of the entertainment and commercial activities that will continue under the redevelopment of downtown Kingston. You have the vendors, you have the people that come and spend. You know, we have well over a hundred million dollars in circulation in one day, right? And so that by itself tells you, you know, it's something big that is happening. It is a zone that people feel comfortable to be in and that by itself engenders more and more events like it to happen. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Lorraine Mendez. Thanks for watching.